What is good? We're back. We got no Jay Wayne. He's going to be mad about that button. I pressed a little too early. Mm. But we're here. We're ready to do some 24 Superflex Tight End Premium way too early mock drafting. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. We got our guy, Austin. How you doing, bud? Good, man. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing, we're doing really well. Heard you were in the, in the chuck. How was everything? Good, man. It was beautiful. I, I told y'all the only thing I uh, I need help with is I just got to figure out how to convince my girlfriend to move there, man, because yeah. uh, we love Charleston. It was both of our first time my cousin got married, and uh, yeah, we have nothing but positive things to say about Charleston. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good time, man. So uh, t- sorry we couldn't link up, but, but we're here. We got a, a fun little 24, our second 2024 Superflex tight end premium rookie mock draft. We're just going to go, you know, each of us have four picks. Yada, yada, yada. I'm going to kick this thing off. I'm going Caleb Williams. Uh, shocker. No shocker there, although I think some people have, have gotten just... Caleb's been too good for too long, and I think people are getting bored. you got to shuffle it up. you got to yeah. put May up there. Yeah. You know, Caleb can't play inside structure, yada, yada, yada. Caleb is putting this team on his back right now. That team is dog shit. Um, well, the defense is at least. Right. And, and I mean, you know, the offensive line, yeah, you know, and... Just what Caleb's doing it has been exceptional um, and, and is outstanding, and I'm, I, have, I have no reason to um, bump him anywhere. I think he's number one. He will be number one. And, and just like, you know, E.T. stayed too long and everybody found holes in E.T. When you stay too long and you're too good for too long, it's almost a negative. Um, so Caleb Williams, you know, the whole crying thing, I think that's silly. A bunch of grown men getting upset about Caleb Williams crying. Like, dude, that guy's 19 years old. You lose the fact that these guys are kids, man. He's out there having a good time. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, maybe he realizes that, that this is it. It didn't get where he came to accomplish. And, and that was it. He's playing with some emotion. He, he must give a shit, uh, to some degree. And, you know, just a bunch of old grown men being upset that he's crying and that he shouldn't be a first round draft pick because of that is absolutely silly. Um, that, that makes absolutely no sense to me. So I mean, Terrell Pryor still gets mocked by Penn state fans <laughs> this day. Cause he was crying. You know, whatever. I mean, but his last name also rhymes with cry. Yeah, so sure. Throw sure. a cry. It really flows off the tongue pretty but, well there. You know, uh, he, the, the F U N D on the fingernails thing, the fingernail being painted. You know, listen, I get it. You, you may not. The, the guys who are upset about him crying are certainly not okay with guys wearing fingernail polish mm, either. Yeah, that, that, yeah um, that, that Venn diagram is just a circle. <laughs> right. Uh, but again, that's a that's a huge old rivalry, man. I want you to be fired up and doing different things yeah. uh, for rivalries. Uh, but anyway, Caleb Williams and, and, and being upset when you lose, like, would you right. rather have him be like, up? you know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't care. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. But, he's like, I'm, I'm about to get my bag and right. I don't know, six months. Yeah. So Caleb Williams, one, one, uh, Matt, who you got at, uh, at one, two, keeping the, keeping the, um, uh, chalk moving here. We're just going to go Drake may. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think you have to say, I think, I amount. think you could probably consider the guy who, who Austin is going to take at three here as well too, but when super flex, I'm gonna stick with the quarterback. Oh yeah, I forgot to pop. Ooh, got a fresh crack. What you yeah, yeah. So we got up. we got Caleb and Drake May. No, no real surprise. But uh, Austin, who you got at three? I think Matt was foreshadowing a little bit, and I think he's right. So, what you got? Yeah, man. Mar- Marvin Harrison Jr. falling to one of three is, is probably one of the best values uh, that you can get in this draft. And I know it's November. Um, but I think there definitely is an argument to be made for even taking Marvin Harrison Jr. over the quarterbacks. I understand Ooh. it's super flex. Um, that's spicy. But I think I, I really do think that this kid is, and it, this I don't like to use the G word generational, but like <laughs> he is one of the extremely oh. few exceptions where I'm cool with it, right? Um, man, you want to just talk about pure hype just from the media, right? I, and this is even a hot take. I actually think that Marvin Harrison Jr. is getting more hype as a prospect than Chase was, and I get Chase yeah, is, yeah. is yo, I love Chase. I mean, loved him coming out, but geez, man, Marv, if Marvin Harrison Jr. is not a hall of fame wide receiver when it's all said and done like he's going to be looked at as a bust right? <laughs> it's crazy yeah right i mean maserati I mean, marvin <laughs> yeah, gus man. johnson just makes up these names and it's just i don't under, I, I don't love get gus. it i love gus um i have just, i have mixed feelings about gus 
So Marvin Harrison Jr. actually has a, a, a younger brother, and mm-hmm. he's going to be even better. Oh, I'm just yeah. kidding, but That's he does I have heard. a younger no, brother. No, apparently he is. That's what Marvin Harrison Jr. said. He said his, his younger brother's better. Yeah, I just I rather than me just ripping off Marvin Harrison Jr. stats or saying he's good because like everybody knows that I just wanted to kind of just like try and provide other information that a lot sure. of people don't know. Um, but I think he's as close to a perfect prospect as possible, yeah. right? Um, yeah, six four sure. two two oh five. Maybe you want in a perfect world him to put on 10, 15 pounds and be like Calvin, baby Calvin Johnson. Like I, I'm just nitpicking here. Um, I don't really know how much better he can get. I think his best attribute, honest to God, is his tracking. Um, I mean, his hands, uh, his burst, his speed, right? He, he could just, he can do everything. He's um, just, th- he, like, he's just there when, when, when Ohio state needs, needs, nine yards he's gonna get him 12 mm-hmm. you know what i yep. mean it's just he was I, I hate to always bring back the penn state game but he was literally the difference in that game if oh, if sure. ohio state does not have marvis and harrison jr i'm not sure they win the game i think they probably still win the game but he was literally the difference there was no one I, else especially with i think Buka and, Her- I think and, right, and henderson out you know what i mean i think you're right i don't i seriously don't think they win that game without him and he had two huge touchdowns last week um, against Rutgers, yeah. and then the, the previous four games, he had at least a hundred yards and a touchdown minimum in in all of them. Yeah, I mean, man, he is just uh, he's special. He, he, he's special. He is. Who do you yeah. got at one hundred four, man? Well, just you got a real treat. The one one through three, I don't think you can really go wrong here. Um, yep. So at four, I think this is when you get you know some sort of difference. But I'm I'm sticking with my guy Penix. We did this last time. I'm going with Penix. Seems like a lot of uh, variation on on where people stand with him. Seems like mostly a first round at this point for the most part. I don't really understand why he wouldn't be. And I, I think he's just the third best quarterback in this class. I think he's everything you look for in modern NFL. Like he gets the ball downfield. He's extremely accurate with it. He's got a strong enough arm and he doesn't turn it over with attacking downfield. And and those are the kind of things that you want. He's he's leading the NCAA in in, in pass yards with 3205, got a 9.9 yards per attempt. He's got 26 TDs. That's good for third and and only 7 INTs uh in that stretch of of games that he's played and and overall they have him as the third best passer PFF does. You know, actually they have him as the first best passer tied with Bo Nix. Um, I would be so. surprised if we don't see Michael Penix in New York for the Heisman ceremony. Right. And I think he is right now the Heisman guy, the I think, Heisman I think runner. the front runner, right. I, a lot of places have Jaden Daniels, but. Right. And, and Jaden Daniels has been great, but you know, I think Penix had a, has had a couple of moments here and, and sure. Penix is winning the games that, that he needs to win. Yeah. And he's solely responsible for winning a lot of those games and putting Washington in the position uh, to stay in the playoffs. So a lot of eyes on him. I get it. He's a little bit older. He's had some injuries. I think he is a little bit more athletic. I think some of those injuries have led him to to yeah. be kind of the passer that he is. But he, I think he can run around a little bit. But he doesn't need to. Uh, everything that you're seeing from Penix for me is ha- got him at at three right now for the quarterbacks. Yeah. Um, and I think it's going to be hard for me to move off of four. I'm not going to take Lockett when we get into really uh, grinding through some tape and stats and stuff. We shall see. Um, but right now he's sticking at at number four for me because like i said I, I love the efficiency and the downfield striking ability um of Penix. not scared um so matt who you got at uh, at number five here so i this was kind of a place where i was like ah i could go probably four or five different directions here so i'm just gonna i think i'm gonna take one of the better athletes as a wide receiver and take Penix's battery mate here in roma dunn so um yeah. he's shown some a un- elite athleticism this year, I think he's a solid, a, a solid pass catcher, um, and I think he's only, I think he's only taken his game to the next level. I think before this year, he was probably, um, I was talking with Riley before the season because I was in the middle of a Devi draft before last season. I was like, oh, I was going to take, oh, what do you know about Roma Duns? And he's like, oh, you know what I mean? We have we have him as a third round grade, and I think he's definitely put himself in the day one oh in, yeah in the day He's one category for sure going to be a day one wide receiver so someone you obviously you like seeing people ascend in their right. in their senior season so i mean he's had five games with a five games with 100 yards he's got seven touchdowns he's almost got a thousand yards through 10 games so yeah. and they've been missing some of their other receivers there but he, he's been the constant he's been the go-to when yeah. they need him He's and just, he can play, so he, he had that he had that punt return touchdown right. as well too. So he he's a big guy who can move yeah, a lot of versatility. Six three two fifteen. So he's got that size that he's got that size that you're looking from. Yeah. Uh, maybe that 
those 10 pounds you're looking at Harrison to gain, but I, I think Harrison's weight is just fine. Yeah, I if, mean... If Devonta Smith can 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 <laughs> yeah. succeed at maybe 165 pounds, I think Harrison Jr. will be fine at 205. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, you know, we, we, had a, we had a smaller draft class, some short kings, if you will, at receiver here. We got a, a lot of bigger guys here. Yeah. Um, but I think you could have went it in a lot of different directions there yeah. with this. We, we have a 6'7 wide receiver coming out this year. Right. So I, I think that's, you know, interesting spot there. Last time we did it, I don't think Rome maybe even made the top 12, and this time up at five. So we're kind of jockeying guys around, yeah. not the same thing. I think you took Bauer there, Bowers there last time. Yeah. I think I'd still, in one, in one and a half PPR, uh, tight end premium, Prob, yeah, he's he's in consideration there, but one point seven five and, and two tight end premium. I think Bowers is yeah could go as high as four. Sure, sure. All right, uh, Austin, who you got? Yeah, man, one hundred six. I took another wide receiver, Keon Coleman. Um, he, so he's the same exact height as Marvin Harrison Jr., six foot four, but he's about ten eleven pounds heavier, two sixteen. Uh, he's just a literal highlight reel, man. He's a dog. He's a superstar in the making. He is fun to watch. Uh, Coleman spent his first two seasons at Michigan State, transferred to FSU. Do you guys think FSU is legit, man? How do you guys feel about F- FSU? Have they lost yet, or are they still undefeated? I don't. FSU's, I can't remember. FSU's eight and zero, correct? They're the four seed right now, I believe. Um, okay, yeah. they're undefeated. I just, man, I don't. I don't know if I believe that they're. Uh, they're truly it, as good as their record. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I love that they brought all those guys back. Keon Coleman just looks so good this year, man. He transferred to FSU. Nine touchdowns in eight games. Um, yeah. are, like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Uh, you know, when he gets drafted very easily next year, he's still going to be 20 years old. That's crazy. So it, it is. It is crazy. Um, but. A little background information for y'all. As a true freshman at Michigan State in 2021, Keon Coleman played in 10 games, and he had seven receptions for 50 yards, a touchdown. Um, But after that season, he played in six games for the school's basketball team. Mm -hmm. Um, As a sophomore in 2022, he became a starter, led the team in receiving yards. And then April of 2023, he would enter the uh, transfer portal. Right. And Keon Coleman had a 63 point performance in high school for his basketball team. Right. Like he's just an athlete. And one of my favorite things about Coleman, 62 and a half percent contested catch rates. Yes. Six foot four. Of course, he's going to moss people, you know, and he's just a better athlete. He's just built better than these guys. Yeah. No, he he, he is so much fun to watch. He, he could easily be uh, the second wide receiver taken yeah. above Rome and, and maybe neighbors or neighbor rather. You know, I, I I love watching Kia. He he might be my favorite one to watch play out of all these guys. Um, and, he, and much like uh, I believe you said with Marvin Harrison, like when they need something, he's the guy that can give it to him. They can count on him. The other guy's good too, uh, Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson, um, and they they got a good back, and their quarterbacks seemingly pretty good. I think I I think I would take Washington over Florida State at this point. Um, as far as like maybe the team's a little bit on the on the cusp there. Yeah, well, but, the Big Ten's going to figure itself out here. Yeah. So, um, so one of those teams is going to have to lose it. Well, I think the the nightmare scenario for the Big Ten is if they all lose a game. Yeah. Which is the which is my dream scenario because <laughs> if they Penn all State. because as of right now Penn State would go to the Big Ten title game because of the Big Ten West record. It always leads back to Penn State. It always does. It's <laughs> fine. It's fine. But Keon Coleman, it, love that, love that pick, man. Yeah, um, I mean, it was, I think Keon Coleman. It was crazy. I think. He was getting talked about, and then that first game when he scored three touchdowns, people were like, "Whoa, who's this guy?" So <laughs> definitely got the uh, the uh, the casual college football fans' attention right away. Yeah. So I'm up at seven. I took Shador Sanders here. It does seem likely that he's going back. We did this a day or two ago, and it seemed like I saw an article uh, yesterday or maybe this morning that that it seemed likely that he was going back. Nothing in in concrete. Uh, evidence or a concrete writing that says he's for sure not coming out. Uh, but his dad and him have kind of alluded to it. Uh, I did see a, a Sports Illustrated mock this morning with him in it. So um, I think it's warranted here. I think everything, he, he's got the legs. He's been constantly ascending and getting better behind a, a not-so-great offensive line. The, the Colorado flame has dulled down a little bit, but but he's, he still stands out as a, as a pretty shining star there so don't want to get too deep into sanders because he could be somebody that we don't need to spend a lot of time on because he's coming out next year his dad wants him to be the one one the first quarterback taken which you know you upgrade a little bit more i'm sure a lot of people want to go to colorado at this point and and we could be talking about that uh at this point so 
I took Shador there. I would have probably, if not him there, I would have gone Brock um, or Neighbor. So, uh, those it, I think it's Neighbors. Neighbors. It's neighbors. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. So I would have taken either one of those guys there, if not Sanders. So, Matt, who who you got at uh, eight here? It's Brock. Yeah. And I think, you know, obviously the injury right now. Yeah, it's a is, high ankle sprain. It's fine. Right. But you're just not seeing him out there. So it's like it's, it's kind of getting pushed to the back of some yeah. people's minds, maybe. And I think just the fact that you're seeing some of these uh, tight ends right now in the league that being rookies, Laporta and Kincaid break out. I think it gives people even more fire to go up and say in tight end premium, take Brock wherever the hell you want to take Brock, really, you know, yeah. and outside of maybe the top three or four. Um, so. Yeah, I, I, mean, I love it. I mean, they're, he's already getting the Travis Kelsey comparisons mm-hmm. already. So, I mean, he's not like the elite blocker that Gronk was. But, I mean, the guy, I mean, he has like, I think he has like five or six rushing touchdown. And like some of them were like like long touchdowns. Right. He's just a crazy mismatch. And he, he's been certainly their guy. They've missed him a little bit uh, in, you know, not in the lineup, but. Oh, they got they got a good old lad there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the backup's pretty good. Um, uh, no, that's their that's the wide. Res- well, I'm saying their backup uh, tight ends. Well, pretty yeah, good. They, I mean, Georgia just has five, four, and five stars at every position. Yeah, but and they're, uh, they're too deep there. But Brock Bowers, I feel like you know, is is head and shoulders above every tight end that came out this past year, and we were excited about Kincaid and Laporta and Mayer. So I would say that the I would say the hype for Bowers is higher than any of those guys. Right. It's it's Pitts level. Uh, and I, I would say beyond. it's probably higher than right. Pitts. I don't I don't know that in my time playing Dynasty we've had a this type of tight end coming out. And, and I'm I'm a I'm a big proponent of of you know once we get to premium for the tight end position I want the good tight end because I do think it's it's an advantage week in week out. Um, yeah. So anyway, Austin, who you got here at nine? Yeah, man, I, I like that pick. Um, I think that was a layup for you. I yeah. absolutely yeah. nailed it. Um, but at, at the one oh nine. I'm going to roll with Malik neighbors, man. I'm just taking receiver after receiver after receiver here. Uh, they just keep falling. They just keep falling to me. And I love the value. I love the players. Um, let me just say this though. And I, and I truly mean it. I actually have Malik neighbors ahead of Keon Coleman in my personal rankings. And I dude, I love, I love Malik neighbors. Um, and I know this isn't real. I know that this is just a mock draft, but I wanted to approach, approach it as if it was real. <clears throat> and I got lucky during this draft because I had a feeling that neighbors might fall to me at 109. I knew for a fact that Keon Coleman was not going to fall to me uh, that late. So um, in my rankings, I actually have Malik Neighbors right now today as my wide receiver two in dynasty rookie drafts for t- the 2024 class. Um, so for him to fall to me at the 109 in a super flex draft, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm ecstatic to land Malik Neighbors here. I, I just think he's an unreal talent. Um, I know for a fact that I'm higher on him than consensus, and that's cool. Like, I guess I'm already planning a flag as my guy. Love it. Um, but I, I think that this kid is special. Six foot 200 out of LSU, man. Um, I'm convinced if you just play football at LSU, you are uh, – <laughs> <That's laughs> Well, maybe not before because there were some real bum yeah. wide receivers that were coming yeah. out there pre uh, – Pre OBJ, yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, um, I can't even I can't even remember some of those. I think they, I think they all played for the Packers, but they were all just <laughs> bums year after year. I, for sure, man. Um, there's, I, I was just joking. Of no, course, no, I no, no. I know. Yeah, no. But of recent but, memory, yes. I mean, like it's crazy. They just keep pumping out guy after guy after guy there. So listen to what neighbors has done recently, right? Against Alabama last week, ten for one seventy one in the touchdown. Um, Four for 121 and two touchdowns against Army. Six for 89 and one was like his worst game of of the year practically. Six for 146 and one. Eight for 102 and one. Eight for 130 and two. Thirteen for 239 and two. I, dude, it, it's and there's still like other productive games that he had earlier in the season, but like he just steps on the field and he just dominates. It's not even like he has a has a good game like six for 60. Like he's just dominating. He's just better. Um, but th- some of the things that I just genuinely enjoy about watching his tape and like by no means am I a scout, but I loved his hands. I loved his blocking. And whenever you're a good blocker, of course, you're always going to find yourself on the field more frequently. That's going to lead to more volume, more targets. And that's all we care about as fantasy players is is volume. Right. And um, the other thing, I think he's a very solid deep threat. 
but I am all in on Malik Neighbors, and I just want to thank you guys for letting him fall to me at 109. <laughs> I think I think that's a steal, man. I think that's a, that's a real steal. I don't think he'll end up going there. I think he'll end up yeah. being a little higher. I'll be interested to where these guys are going to shake out when it comes when I dig into the film. So yeah, this yeah. is you know it's a mock. We're having fun. You, you twitch it up a little bit. See see how you feel about taking certain guys uh, in certain places. So uh, I'm up next. I took Bo Nix here. You went, you're going wide receivers, wide receivers, wide receivers. I'm going quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. <laughs> Um, and I actually can't believe in in, in any world I took Bo Nix in this yeah. draft because coming into this season, there's no way you could convince me that I'd ever take Bo Nix in the first well, round of a super. I, draft. I mean, two years ago, I mean, he was just uh, he was a gar- he was garbage. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, again, uh, just has been a, ascending, and you know, this year he's kind of proved it to me that that he seems like he's the real deal. Uh, only two turnovers on the season, 25 yards or 25 TDs, 26, uh, 69 yardage wise, 298 attempts. Uh, Oregon's playing at a really high level. Uh, they do have a good wide receiver out there uh, who will probably name after the top 12 here. Probably will make it into the second or third round of the NFL draft, mm-hmm. if not push at the bottom of the first. But Bo Nix, man, I can't I can't hate on him anymore. I've been a huge Bo Nix hater um, and he's kind of proved me wrong, I think. You know, J.J. McCarthy right now is is somebody who who could easily be on this list, but didn't I, I went Bo here? <coughs> we talked this weekend. Sorry, I had to cough there. Sorry, <laughs> I had a real quick cough there. Um, so I, I I haven't quite bought into J.J. McCarthy. Um, it took a while for me to buy into Bo Nix, and he's he's really done a big 180 for me. So I just co- super flex going quarterback here, and I've I've liked what I've watched a lot of Oregon this season, and I've liked what I've seen from Nix uh, week in week out, safe with the ball, but but effective getting down the field with the ball, scoring touchdowns. Uh, you know, that Washington game was awesome. And he's got some legs, too. Right. He does have legs that he can use. He hasn't been using them quite as much this year, maybe. If, I don't have the stats in front of me, but it doesn't seem like it. But he can he can get that first down when you need it. He can get that touchdown when you need it. I think he's um, just that level quite above that sneaky athletic. I think right. he's that next. He's that, like, I, I I don't know. who. Like, he's not jo- he's not Josh Allen, but he's also not, like, He's like in between like Joe Burrow. Yeah, but he's better. But I think he's more athletic than Burrow is yeah. even. Like I don't like I, I don't know. He's just maybe Herbert. Another Herbert's probably was pretty. He kind of stopped running there. He has yeah. stopped running since those couple of injuries. But Herbert was pretty athletic too. Yeah, Casey, I like a lot of what you said. Where do you think he gets drafted realistically? Do you think he? Do you think he's a top ten pick? Do you think I, there's? I don't. I don't think so. But I, you know, who knows, man? Depends what teams are up, end up being in the top ten. Um, it seems. Seems like all the mocks I look at seems to be he seems to be up hot pretty high right right up there with Penix and some people have him over Penix. And I've seen the Ram. I I saw a mock draft the other day with Rams taking him at six. Yeah, yeah. I think it depends if he can have one good throw at the pro day, he might be able to go like second overall. But I don't know. We'll have to see, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. It's it, no, but the off season is wild for quarterbacks. It really it, their is. their stock can shoot up so fast. Yeah. Man. And, and uh, you know we'll see what, where he's at at the end of the year, uh, and, and you know where that where Oregon can end up, you know, actually in in the playoff, playing in, in front of a bunch of people. And that mm-hmm. when you get those national games, that really you know change sways a lot of opinions of of some people as well. So speaking of scouting, real quick, did you guys see that the uh, uh, the NFL announced today that they're allowing non seniors to go to yeah. the, the All Star games? Yeah, oh, I think awesome. that's cool. It's yeah. all for ratings, all for money, isn't it? Yeah. Well, so I was talking to, again, I was talking to Riley about it earlier today, who actually works for the Shrine Bowl. And he's like, I don't think it's really going to change all that much because those top guys aren't, aren't really, going really, to go anyways. Yeah. Like, you're not going to see redshirt sophomores going to the going to that because they're going to be, if you're leaving as a redshirt sophomore, you're probably a first, or you're probably right. almost elite, a guaranteed first talent. or second round yeah. pick. And what's the point of you going to an all-star game? So, yeah. It'll be it'll be interesting to see though how how that gets affected. So so no no running backs yet in this draft. Are you going to be the first one to pull the trigger, Matt? Who you got? I'm not. Okay. I'm, I am taking uh, Harrison's running mate there in Amike Egbuka, who I thought was the better wide receiver at the beginning of the season last year. I thought he was going to ascend once we saw um, JSN <sighs> miss those games. He was the guy last year who Stroud was looking at, and then Harrison Jr. kind of take on take on there. And Egbuka's Egbuka's been uh, banged up this year. He missed. Uh, he's missed three games. So we'll see how he does. But I think he's. I think he's easily a top five wide receiver in this class, and pro- most likely a first round pick as well too. So yeah, um, he's been a guy who's been he's who's been uh, who's been on people's radars since his, since last year. He got a little bit of run, but it's so hard with those Ohio State wide receivers to get 
on the field as a, as a freshman. So yeah, um, you really have to wait and c- kind of wait your turn in that offense. But um, I yeah. don't I've, I don't see a reason him getting out of the first round of rookie or at the NFL draft. I think he's pretty solidly in there. I think you took him maybe a little higher last time, Austin. Do you remember where you took him? Yeah, yeah. no, you're correct. I, I did take him higher. Um, I saw some mocks with him going early second, and I'm just, I'm just like, man, like he, he absolutely deserves to be like, you know, probably around twenty to twenty five in my yeah. opinion. I, yeah. I think he's, I think he's kind of gotten the pendulum swung a little too much. I think he's a little, he, he's over faded now. Yeah, um, yeah. Right, like, and I don't, I don't know if it's cool to fade him because I think Ibuk is a very good player. Yeah. I love his size and his production, uh, but I'm with you, man. I like him a lot. Yeah. All right, last pick in the round. Are we gonna get a? Are we gonna get a running back in the first round of a of a super flex way too early mock draft? Yeah. Yes, we are. Yeah. The one twelve. I was like, man, let's just have fun with it. I was looking at a lot of the names and like, eh, you know, Travion Henderson looked so good this week, and I, and I like a lot of what I saw from him last season and. And I just I believe, you know, 5'10", 215, first running back off the board. Um, how good did he look against Rutgers, man? And how so about good. Wisconsin? He's got over 200 yards in back to back games. Right. Um, he's just not only is he doing a lot of damage on the ground, but through the receiving game yeah. man, 80 receiving yards last week. 45 the week before 128 rushing yards 162 104 back to back to back weeks this kid's getting it done man 6.5 yards per carry uh ohio state is just dropping stud after stud after stud mm-hmm. it's it's just not even fair i'm convinced i could go coach there and we might be 500 <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but uh supposedly he ran a four four five in high school for what for whatever that's worth i i was just laughing at that i was looking at um travion henderson on player profiler and i was like eh, really like maybe i don't i probably wasn't very accurate but he, yeah. yeah yeah he's a he's a hell of an athlete and uh you know this is allegedly a, a, a very weak running back class mm-hmm. for the most part uh but he's at the top yeah, he, he's one that came came out of the gates really hot, and then since faded due to some injuries and whatnot. Yeah, uh, but the, you know the raw talent is, was certainly there. We've seen a little bit of a resurgence the last couple of weeks, so I like it. I like throwing the name in there, getting uh, getting him in the first round. I don't hate it. I think I think in the second round of superflex tight end premium drafts, you're going to get a lot of the running backs yeah. to go. So yeah, if you I want those right, that. at least right now, it seems like loading up on the second for the running backs could be the the sweet spot. Um, so which, 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 which hasn't been great in in recent past loading up on second round running backs yeah well second round uh in the actual draft or second round in the in rookie the, drafts in the rookie drafts rookie yeah drafts. okay um you guys have any names let's get a couple you got a couple names that we want to throw in here honorable mentions who maybe didn't quite make it but but you think you think a lot of um you want me to start yeah go ahead. I'll, yeah, I'll, go throw ahead out, I'll throw out some names there so there are a few guys that crossed my mind when i was sitting at the 112 um xavier worthy i was strongly considering um you know <clears throat> troy franklin or um that yep. was the yep. guy yep. yep um and then who else, who else stuck out to me uh i you know so i like braylon Ed, uh sorry Alan? braylon Oh my God. <laughs> I like Braylon Allen. Um, I, it did not feel right. Felt like it was just way too early for, for the situation. Um, Jatavian Sanders, this is a tight end. We're, we're playing a one and a half yeah. tight end premium, right? This mock. Uh, so he definitely crossed my mind. Yeah, you know, Blake, I've had my eyes on even like Blake Corum for a while as the whole yeah. bizarre situation going on over there. Um, and uh, the, I guess the last guy I want to mention, someone who I was. I, I was definitely interested in man, someone who I think he's kind of flying under the radar. I like Trey Benson. I don't know he's what the future list. holds. Yep, and uh, I, I don't know what the future holds. I like Trey Benson, man. I, th- yeah, I think he's a very, very good Jason player, Jason and I, I think he deserves to be talked about a lot more. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I know Jason likes Benson a lot too. Um, I think you know Jaden Daniels deserves. His, I'll, I'll hit another quarterback since I took yeah. them all. I've got um, two more to. I've got two more to talk about. So quarterbacks or yeah what? okay yeah well i, I think Jaden daniels is playing playing really well um and he's got that rushing upside that we want in our fantasy quarterbacks um i could see him kind of creeping up the boards here and being a favorite by the end of the draft process for nfl teams and fantasy players because of the the rushing upside and the floor being built up for him uh go ahead matt who do you so got? quinn ewers who, who was taken in the first our first draft he mm-hmm. wasn't taken this time mm-hmm. i think part of that is again someone who's been injured so right kind of forgot about him and then 
we mentioned him, but it, it, as much as I don't know how much he's been tested so far this year, you got to have J.J. McCarthy yeah. up there as well, too. Yeah. So the, the, the thing I'm concerned with J.J. McCarthy about is, is, is his overall arm strength. He's just not pushing the ball deep down the field, but... Uh, he's done it a and couple that times. Cupcake schedule. Yeah, he does have a cupcake <laughs> schedule. I will. I will give Michigan this, even though how much, whatever the sign stealing thing is, I don't really care about that. I think they did have a a big game scheduled and it got canceled. They're supposed to play like Texas or Oklahoma or something like that, and it got canceled for some reason or another. So I'm going to give them a pass there. But yeah, I mean JJ McCarthy's been playing great so far this year in against yeah and not I, some not great opponents. I think he's going to end up higher on first round. Uh, rookie draft boards here, especially how, depending on how far Michigan goes, how how much exposure he gets. But he seems like he's super hot right now. Uh, so yeah, I think JJ McCarthy deserves it. Xavier uh, Leggett, South yep. Carolina wide receiver, he is on my list too. Um, you mentioned Sanders, a tight end from Texas. I think he's probably the number two tight end right now. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, is 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 the guy from Kansas, Neil, um, the running back? Is he is he eligible? Draft eligible this year? I don't know. He's he's filthy. I really enjoy watching him. He's probably my favorite running back to watch right now. Uh, the guy from Oregon. I'm drawing a Bucky um, Wilson. No, I'm drawing a blank on his yeah, name right now. But I'm but, pulling it up now. But he's, Bucky Irving. You're Bucky talking about Irving, Bucky Irving, yeah. Right? Yep. yeah, yeah. He's he's a lot of fun to watch. I've been enjoying watching him. You know who I really like at running back is Audric Estime. The estimate that's the Notre Dame guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You got Johnny Wilson. You got uh, probably Jason's boy Shipley, um, the Great White Hope. Um, you know, you know who's getting so much hype lately. I don't know if you guys have been seeing Jonathan Brooks from uh, uh, the Texas is running back. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess they're RBU yeah. all of a sudden, but yeah. man, he's been getting a lot of love. Um, he's uh, he's just an interesting name. He'll probably be a nice, fun dart throw as like a mid to late second. I think in a lot of drafts, I really think he could be yeah. going there. Um, we just hope he can. It's guys like that that we just hope get good NFL. Um, draft capital right, right. i'll like be interested what happens there. with with someone like raheem sanders as well too yeah. someone who came into the season as some yeah. people are talking about and i just feel like he's just been forgotten about because arkansas has been great yeah. this year he he was the next guy i was going to mention man he was talked about this summer as arguably the rb1 he mm-hmm. was loved by everybody everyone was just infatuated with him man he he's uh i've had my eye on him i haven't talked about him in a while but I'm uh, I just I monitor him every single week and uh, man I would love to see him break out just just get the good draft cap in the NFL and it's it's wild how how much your stock can can fluctuate right in, right. in just a few months it's it's truly uh, fascinating yeah no I, I I I agree with you it really it really can I mean even just in the drafts that we've did um through this last month or whatever, we've had some good fluctuation and some of it is mm-hmm. on purpose and just some of it is kind of, you know, us being with what's going on. Devin Neal was the Kansas. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is he eligible back. this year? I, I didn't look that up. I just wanted to get his name oh, okay. correct. A um, couple other guys real quick. Uh, the two other wide receivers from Washington Polk um, and McMillan, I think is, is I believe his name. Yep. And um, we, we mentioned um, Johnny, He's, Johnny Wilson. Neal's eligible next year. Neal's eligible way. next year. Okay. Um, Johnny Wilson from Florida State, the other the other mm-hmm. guy, big fella, um, and then uh, Tez Walker uh, at, at UNC yep. since he's been reinstated. Yep. Oh my gosh, just been absolutely on fire. I think he's yeah. going to be climbing the boards uh, as well. Yeah. So just wanted to throw a couple extra guys. You mentioned Corum and Edwards. Uh, you know, yeah, we didn't even talk the, about Edwards. Yeah. Not having the gain that you know the, the where they were coming into the season, so they've been faded a little bit. But you know, even I think though both even talented though players, Corum is leading the nation in rushing touchdowns. Right. Uh, both both pretty talented players. So. Um, a lot of, lot of good stuff there. We'll be getting into the second rounds, uh, you know, in, in the coming months here as we dive in a little further and, and we'll, we'll keep spitting these out, you know, once a month. So make sure you like, subscribe, comment below. Austin, where can we find you on the Twitters? At Austin Abbott FF on Twitter. Make sure you go give our guy a follow. Uh, I think we got Austin on maybe some shows on Monday as well. So you'll be seeing a lot of Austin here in the next couple uh, videos and podcasts from us. So make sure you go ahead and, and follow him. Uh, shout out to Big D, who's not here right now, but but been uh, been a team player for a while, and we'll be we, uh, we'll see Big D back in a, in a week or so. So we got 2024 um, startup mock uh, coming out as well. So we just we finished, just finished one of those with the patrons. So we'll we'll talk a little bit about who's rising and falling. Another reason to like, subscribe, comment below. Join 20, the- 2024 startup draft without. 
2024 eligible rookies. So yeah, we'll I, take with a grain of salt. I, I wanted to see where everybody was moving and shaking, but then the next one we'll we'll add in uh, the rookies. So we uh, we very much appreciate you guys. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below for like the fifth time. I've said that. Discord five dollar holler, much appreciated, uh, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.